Well, in this video, I want to do a few things. One is I want to talk about um, what I actually got a little bit stuck on last time, which is how I can show um, the axes labels. It had worked right before I did my demo and then broke then. So I did a little bit more research and I can give a better answer now. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is different kinds of web resources. Um, you notice here that uh, I don't have any sort of .html or anything like that. Uh, but nonetheless, this is an HTML page, and there's a way that that is communicated from the Flask server. Um, same thing for these images, right? Um, uh, the extension ends with SVG, uh, but that's just for humans, right? That's not really how a, a web server like Flask communicates to a web browser like Chrome um, what the type is. Now, Chrome is figuring it out here because it's smart, but um, there's a better way that we can actually communicate that, and so I'm going to show that. Uh, to make sure this works on a wider range of browsers. Uh, and then finally, where are these values coming from? Um, here, uh, I'm actually just randomly adding new values um, every time the page is refreshed. But generally, there'll be some sort of external process that wants to be uploading things um, to our dashboard. And um, there's different ways we can do that. There's different ways to get information into um, a web application. Uh, probably the most important way is posting data. So I'm going to talk about how we can do um, a, a post in here. Okay, so first, what's the deal with um, having uh, no axes labels here? And, uh, and the answer is that um, when I do a save fig, uh, matplotlib truncates it. And so they actually are there. Um, these are showing up. Uh, in the figure itself, if I was doing an inline in a Jupyter notebook, I'd see it. But when I save it, I don't actually get anything. And so there's kind of a silly thing I have to do, and that is I have to say plot dot uh, tight layout. And I do that, and then that's going to magically fix my problems. And I have to do that before I actually save my um, figure. So I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to say plot dot tight layout. And, uh, and that's going to hopefully um, make that actually show up. It's going to tightly set the bounding box around everything I've drawn, including text. And um, let me actually do that in the other one too. Right here, I'd like to have that. And, uh, and let's come over here and refresh. And now you can see it's actually properly giving me both an x-axis and a y-axis. The other thing, while we're on uh, kind of um, in the mode of fixing bugs, is let, let's say I refresh a bunch of times, like more than 20. Um, you can see that eventually I get this error. It says more than 20 figures have been opened and, uh, and you should eventually close them to avoid consuming too much memory. And so what does that mean? That means I should come over here and after I've done my save fig, after I've saved it to my fake file, which is my bytes.io, I should just say fig.close. And so I'm gonna do that in both cases here. And uh, let me restart this uh, server. And um, let, let me see if I can get up to as many as I had before. Um, oh, and, and, and sorry, it's saying that figure object has no attribute close. This is just kind of a weird quirk. I have to say plt.close in general, that closes the current figure. And so let me actually run that now. So now I'm good. Now I'm in business. I run this a bunch of times. And um, we're definitely up to where we were before, over 20, and no problem, right? So I just have to make sure my resources are, are cleaned up um, when I'm done, right? So I fixed two bugs there, the, the labels and then the close. The other thing, which could be a bug, even though it's not showing up with Chrome here right now, is that, well, what type of files are um, these images? And so if I make this a little bit bigger, and then I go to Tools and Developer Tools, then, I refresh this page, then I, I, I look at these different files that I have grabbed, and what you're going to see is that I have both a type here, right? You see I have a little bit of type information about each of these, and then I have the name over here. And do and you actually notice something kind of funny? Uh, these are .svg files, that's what it says in the end, but somehow uh, it's saying that the type is text slash uh, HTML, which is wrong, right? The type information is wrong. Chrome is figuring it out even though I did it wrong, which is good, but not every browser might be so forgiving. If I click on one of these, I can see that I have these response headers here. 
Um, the response headers are just like a dictionary. Content type is a key, and then this thing is a value. Content length is a key, that number is a value. Server is a key, that thing there is a, is a value. And, and so what I can actually do is I can um, set a different key or a different value for this key, right? I can I can actually do it properly. And, uh, and so I'm going to do that just so this is going to work uh, in general, right? And so what I'm going to have to do is change this down here. Right now, I'm just returning some bytes. And when I'm just returning some bytes instead of a full response object, uh, Flask figures out the details. It just assumes that it's text HTML, which is wrong. And so when I import Flask from the Flask module, I should also uh, I should also return response, or I should also import response. And then what I can do is down here I can say uh, response, and uh, which is happening by default anyway. And then the nice thing I can do is I can pass in a headers. I can uh, pass in this headers dictionary like so. Uh, again in both cases. And uh, now I can actually say, well, what do I want that content type to be, right? I can make it something else if I want. And um, you could Google this. It's, um, you would search for MIME types, uh, MIME types like this. If you wanted to see what string you should put for different types of uh, content, um, I've already done that and I have it here in my notes. So what uh, uh, SVG is supposed to be is like this. It's supposed to be image slash XML plus SVG, that's just the convention. That's how we specify that we have an SGV, uh, uh, SVG image. So I'm going to actually do that and do the same thing in both cases. And, um, and now I'm going to refresh this thing over here. And now you see that the type is actually what it's supposed to be. It's an XML SVG. And uh, Chrome doesn't really care, but that's going to help me when I'm dealing with um, other browsers, right? So I, I kind of have fixed a few things now. Um, I'm, I'm closing it so I can run this for a long time. I'm uh, returning the proper type for it. Um, the last thing I want to do today is to think about how I'm getting these values, right? Are they just random or do I have some other way uh, to do it? And one way we could get values in is with a query string, right? So if I come up here and I say something like this, if I say something like question mark insert equals five, I do that, and uh, this isn't really showing up anywhere right now, um, but if I'm uh, over here inside of my handler, um, I can access that. And, and the way I access that is I have to import something else from this Flask module. So I have Flask, response, and then there's request, which is a little bit strange, right? Um, that response is uh, uppercase and request is lowercase. Anyway, it is what it is. And down here, I can, uh, can print out request.args. And so I'm going to do that. Let me refresh over here. And you can see that I got this nice little dictionary, right, with a key and a value. And um, right, this insert is the key. That's the value. Uh, if I want to put other things in here, I could say extra equals one, two, three. Right, I do that. And then you can see I have both of them, insert, extra. Kind of a weird looking dictionary, right? Uh, but ultimately, if I want to, I can pull out that insert, right? Like so. And then when I refresh this thing, I can see, well, there's my five. And um, I probably want that to be an integer. So, so if I wanted to, I could do this. I could say um, uh, I want to insert that as, eh, actually, let's make it a float. I think it's going to be a little bit more uh, general, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to refresh this thing. And I have some sort of initial distribution. And if I want to insert, let's say, a bunch of twos, let's just keep doing inserting twos. So what, what do we see here? Well, first off, this line goes flat, right? Because well, I keep getting a bunch of twos. In my distribution, which, which I should probably label CDF just so people know what it is. Uh, CDF. Let me refresh this thing. Oops. And that was not as many times I want. Let me get back there. What you're going to see is whenever this line is really steep, that means there's a lot of values on top of that, right? So there's a lot of values that are two. And I can read this off. I guess it's uh, from you know, something about like 80% to 25%. So I can subtract that and figure out exactly how many. 
Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, there's some issues with this. This is called a query string. Um, one issue is that you see how I'm kind of refreshing the page here and it's showing me something different each time. Um, some web browsers will assume that since it's the same URL, it's the same page as before. And so they might not even send a, a request to the web server. Maybe they send me the, or didn't show me the same data that they showed me last time. So in that case, that's not a very good way to get data in, right? Because, um, because it might not actually send a request back to the Flask server. Um, the other way we can get data in is with a post request. So if I just go back here and uh, go to network, and I wanna look at some of these, like let's say let's look at this one, for example. Um, you can see that the request method was get, and uh, get means I wanna download data post means I want to upload data. So, so posting is another way I can um, uh, get data into the system, okay? And when I'm doing gets, I can just type something in the URL and it gets it for me. When I'm doing posting, I have to have some sort of special tool. I'm not going to be able to use Chrome like right here to just trigger a, a post. I mean, they have some extensions that, for web developers that can do that, uh, but that's not going to work for me. So I'm gonna have a special uh, separate tool that I'm gonna use for that uh, called curl. And, um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm first gonna create something where I actually try to upload the data, right? So I'm gonna head down here and I'm gonna say um, upload like so. And, uh, and then I can, um, I have to give it a new route. So maybe I'll call this like upload, uh, that would be fine, right? And then I have to somehow say what method uh, or methods I want. So usually the default is something like this, method equals get, or I could be a list. Here I want to do a post. And let me just print something here for now. I'm just going to print hi and make sure this is actually working. Never makes sense to write too much code at once. Um, and uh, is it methods? Uh, I'm going to have to just check the documentation here quick if that doesn't work. Um, let me see. Okay, and I think my mistake was, sorry, I just paused for a moment to uh, look at the documentation, which was a little silly because they're actually telling me right here well, my problem is I should read the error messages like I always tell you all to do. Um, allowed methods should be an iterable of strings. Well, iterables, I guess that could be like a list of strings or something like that. Something like methods equals post. They literally told me what to type and, and I didn't type it. So let me do that. Um, and now I run it and, uh, and it's happier, right? And so when I come over here, notice what I cannot do. I cannot say slash upload because that's not a method that's allowed for this URL, okay? And so that's why I'm gonna come over here, create a new window, and I'm gonna use curl, right? So I'm gonna say curl, and curl is a lot like wget, which maybe some of you are more familiar with. I think it's a little bit easier to use for complicated things, and then wget is easier to use for simple things. And, um, and so what I wanna do is I wanna send a request to here. Actually, let's first just send a request to the home page. I, I, I run that. And, um, well, I actually get a new error. Let, let me go back and, um, and try to get rid of this thing for a moment. And so I can actually run this. You see what this does? When I say curl to a given page, it, it shows me the HTML for that page. It sends a get request. And uh, let me clear this out. The, the way it's working is there's a dash capital X here and the default is get. I run a get and I get the page. I want to post the page. I have to do that, and um, and if I do that, well, I can't do a post to the home page. No surprise. I can do a post to the upload page, right? So the view function did not return a valid response. Okay, but I was able to hit it, right? And I was uh, able to print hi, right? So it's not returning anything. Um, so let, let's let's head over here. Let me make this a little bit smaller. Um, I, I need to do a couple things, right? I need to return something like, um, uh, I don't know, I can return true for success. That would be a fine thing to do. Let me do that. And, um, well, actually, 
<laughs> right, I have to return a string, silly me. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And now I get true back. Maybe, maybe I, mean, I should just put a new line there too. So that's fine. So I'm getting data out, right? So um, so I can get my data out. How do I get data in to the system? Well, uh, I can pass it in like this. I can say D and then I can put something in here. Like, um, let's say uh, my input, All right? Let me try to do that. Okay. And, uh, and so how do I actually find that on the other side? Well, I'm going to do like before. I'm going to say, um, uh, I'm going to say uh, request. And instead of args, I don't have any args anymore. I have data. So let me, let me run this. And, well, that's kind of funny. It's kind of taking a long, long time. Let me see if I can do it. There we go. And, um, and my input is currently and, and so my problem here is that it's trying to pull out that and, and put it into some other format. And, and so what I really have to do to force it to put it there is I have to say data first. And so let me try running that. And so I'm going to hit this. And now you can see I'm actually getting this input. It's a, it's a byte string. And, um, and you can imagine parsing it over on this side, right? I could say... Uh, well, let, let's do this. I mean, I ultimately want to get some numbers that are inputted. So let's do something like this. What I'm going to be doing over here is saying something like, you know, one, two, three. I want to get those numbers in the system. And so it's coming in as a string. So I'm going to have to first, um, I'm going to have to first uh, convert that to a string. And I can use some sort of formatting for that. Maybe I'll say uh, utf-8. And, um, and then I'll maybe say like vals equals uh, that. And maybe I'll split on the comma. And so then what I can do is I can loop over that. So for v and vals, I can say something like, um, what do I want to do? I want to append it to this thing, right? So I'm going to say, uh, maybe I could call this uploads, right? I, I guess I called the other, um, the other things values, which is a little bit confusing. So I'm going to say values.append, right, my global up here. I'm going to append, maybe I'll make it floats. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to curl, upload all of those things. And then if I want to refresh this over here, I actually go back to the home page. I can see what I'm getting. So let's just try to experiment here and see what happens. I'm going to have, um, Let's say like four, four, three, three. We upload those, and you can see, sure enough, I get a four, four, three, three, and uh, then there's a few more of those. If I if I keep um uploading a lot of the same, or let's say I get a bunch of twos. Before I do that, can you imagine how my CDF is going to look a little bit different when I run that? I'm going to have a huge spike here, right? I'm going to have a huge spike here because I'm going to have a bunch of values that are less than or equal to 2. I'm going to do that and refresh this. And sure enough, I have a bunch more 2s now. So this is what you'll often imagine when you have some sort of web application that does some sort of monitoring, right? Maybe somebody has some sort of program or tooling that's running that's always uploading data to the web service in some way. And the data is being stored in, you know, maybe files or a database or even here just in variables. And then we have a dashboard, right? A dashboard is a mix of this HTML and then some image plots that get uh, generated on the fly. And that's how we'll actually uh, build websites and dashboards.